Um, thank you for joining us on this meetup about modeling and the role of the developer of the future. My name is João Abreu. I'm Quijas Press Officer and Content Manager. Um, we will have a small intro uh, about what, what models are and we will then proceed to uh, hopefully the presentation of the professor. We will also have time for a Q&A session. The, the professor, João Alvaro Carvalho, uh, focuses most of his work on organizational information systems. He concluded his degree in systems and informatic engineering in 1983. In 1990, uh, he defended his doctoral thesis, uh, Business Meta Models um, Base, a repository of models for assisting the management and development of organizational information systems. It, it, this was done in the Institute of Science and Technology of the University of Manchester. Also meaning he has a lot to say about the subject that brought you all here today. Um, in 2003, uh, he became a full professor at the University of Minho and was one of the promoters for the development and the promotion of the university's department for information systems. Throughout his academic career, uh, he already lectured and inspired several hundreds of engineering students, and I believe uh, some of them are here today. Um, let us start this off by quickly presenting you Quijest. Um, for those who are not aware, we are an IT company based in Lisbon, Portugal, that's been developing software for more than 30 years now. Uh, since our early days, we started using artificial intelligence and automation applied to software development. Um, we just created its own artificial intelligence business-driven tool. Uh, it's called Genio, which is also one of the main reasons why we stand out in the market. Uh, it enables us to deliver future-ready software based in an extreme low-code and model-driven approach. Um, before going any further, um, I, I think this is important to say, uh, some of you may already know, but for those who don't, uh, models are conceptual representations of all the topics related to a specific challenge or problem, such as uh, business rules of, of an organization. Their main objective is to highlight and emit abstract representations of the knowledge and activities that oversee a particular application domain. Uh, think of a model as, such as a, a blueprint. Think of, think of a model as a blueprint used in civil engineering. In the traditional way of developing software, this blueprint either does not exist or is embedded in the software code, which makes continuous improvements or even small tweaks a complicated challenge. However, uh, the model required for software development, it's not just an independent artifact that is consulted during the building phase, it's much more powerful. A software, a software model works more like a DNA since it's a full representation of the solution. Models such as the one produced by Genio grant businesses and organizations the sole desired autonomy to create new solutions, continuous improvements, and instead of taking, uh, let's say, weeks or months, uh, the continuous integration of production cycles usually takes just a couple of hours. It's also important to note that the knowledge about models or the models themselves do not perish or become obsolete, um, which is often a problem associated with technology. They are able to easily evolve to cope with organizational changes. We Genio, a just artificial intelligence and model driven tool, uh, knowledge people are able to engineer solutions. They focus on the business rules instead of the code. A knowledge engineer has the know-how about a management domain and the skills to translate this know-how into Genio models, namely through design thinking. Leapfrogging from code to models and from manual development to AI development, Genio knowledge engineers uh, swiftly become much more productive than traditional developers with years of experience. This much more for less disruption means the change means the change in digital transformation agents and roles. And all of this allied to a spread of Genio poses the question, what role will the developer of the future have in an organization? And what skills should she or he improve uh, in this new reality? Professor, please feel free to start your presentation uh, whenever possible. Carlos Costa, to uh, João uh, Abreu, to João, uh, João Paulo Carvalho for the invitation uh, for, for, this, for this talk. Um, and um, um, okay, so uh, things didn't go as, as planned, but I think we will be able of, uh, do, doing, of doing this. So um, 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 I will ask João Abreu for uh, each time I say slide 
to... Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 Professor. ...to change uh, the, the, the slide. So, um, uh, slide, please. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. So, uh, um, I'm presenting here from the uh, perspective of a uh, uh, university. University of, uh, of Minho. So I'm addressing this theme of modeling the role of the developer of the future uh, from the perspective of um, um, the, the, the university. And the question is, um, why does it matter this topic of modeling the role of the developer for the future? Why, uh, why do, we, do we care, do uh, we at the University of, uh, of Minho? Next. So we have um, five uh, degree programs in, um, in related to computers, related to information technology. So, uh, informatics engineering, our oldest, and I, I could claim that it's the, the first degree program in Portugal uh, in, uh, in this area. It was great, it was, it started in uh, very early in the 70s. Uh, it was a licenciatura with five degrees. Now, became a ma an integrated master and uh, soon, due to the existing regulations, it will have to be in, uh, again, a licenciatura, three years, licenciatura and a master, but as, as well uh, another degree in sciences and computation, so computational engineering and management of information systems, um, uh, telecommunications and informatics engineering, and uh, uh, electronics, industrial electronics and computers. Uh, next, in this set of, uh, of degree programs, University of Minho receives each year around uh, more than 500 students. So you can see, so we are receiving each year 500, years, 500 students interested in, in these topics uh, uh, in, in different programs. And uh, of course we have, uh, well, okay, uh, before the uh, uh, I must confess that I am from. Uh, I'm more involved in the uh, in, in the degree program on in, in the engineering and management of information systems. So, when we address the questions um, of um, um, why does it matter, why do we care? Well, we have to redesign education programs as portfolios of competencies adequate to the current and future needs of IT-related professionals. We have different profiles, different for portfolios of competencies oriented toward different, um, different, um, uh, toward different, uh, different profiles, professional profiles. Um, so, um, addressing this theme of modeling the role of the developer of the future, um, I'm going to. Um, to uh, uh, address this from a, a different perspective. Joan, please move to the slide where it states Genio, a software device that automates the we most go. of we're here, we're here, of Professor. software products. Exactly, we're here. Okay, so in this slide, I'm writing, um, I'm writing, I'm describing Genio using my own words, my own statements, and that I hope is free from uh, jargon, from fashion, from ambitions, from poetry. Okay, we are Genu uh, and Quidgest provides a, G, uh, a Genu, a software device that automates most of the production of software products. Next slide. And uh, so this they claim that, okay, Genu can uh, uh, increase the productivity, uh, uh, multiply it by uh, 100 times. Uh, because uh, it's one tenth of the time and uh, when, uh, when, uh, spending one tenth of, of the resources. So uh, it enables to create uh, 1,330 1, function points a month. So much better than uh, low code solutions or manual coding. Next slide, please. So Genu is sometimes presented as a new paradigm in software development, in software engineering. Okay, that's a point. But uh, the, the, the claims uh, is that software development, um, the claims are in the realm of software development and software engineering. I was looking into the Widgest and Genu website and um, 
uh, I found some sentences. So someone said, oh, it's a revolutionary IDE, is rapid application development for complex management solutions. Now is automatic software generation, is a productivity booster. And what I notice is that these messages are, seem to be directed to the um, uh, to, to software engineers. And uh, uh, next, uh, next slide, please. I, I'm challenging the realm of genius impacts. I don't, uh, okay, um, it, it, that's my opinion. I don't care. It's myself, my opinion. I don't care about the, the impact of genuine software engineering. I see the impact of Genu uh, in the, um, the business and organization development of enterprises. Okay, so it's a different perspective. Okay. So, uh, and please notice these words. Uh, I'm interested in the impact of Quidgest Genu on the business and organization development of enterprises. Okay, I have to clarify this language. First of all, enterprises. And now I'm starting with a series of, of slides with an image I'm building slowly. Um, so, the enterprise. John, please, the slide where is the enterprise? Uh, the title is the enterprise. There we go. Okay, so uh, we are interested in enterprises. Please, please accept that the word enterprise can be used to refer to any kinds of organized um, uh, uh, organized venture, any kind of organized entrepreneurship. Um, and uh, when doing this, it, it can uh, respond to a public administration entity, to an NGO, whatever. In most cases, it will be applied to business enterprises. Next, okay. Looking into the enterprise, uh, we have to, to, to look for its first purpose. There is a vision underlying this. There, is a, there will be a business model and there will be a strategy where goals, objectives, plans are defined and business processes are established. So I would call this the business level of the enterprise, uh, where the business is, is defined. Then after this, we have to start with the business processes and think about work units where humans and artifacts, where machines, and of course we are particularly interested in machines that deal with information, uh, computers. Uh, so uh, business processes, work units, and the, the humans and artifacts that in, within these work units will perform the activities that correspond to the processes, okay? Next, we are in the level of the organization, the organization of the enterprise. Okay, next, uh, these humans, these artifacts, these work units need an infrastructure to work. Okay, that would be another, yet another level, the level of the resources, the resources uh, that are involved in the functioning of the, of the enterprise. Uh, what is the, the role uh, of IT in the in the enterprise? Um, first and most in, most inter mostly interesting, the IT applications. So um, moving forward in the slides, um, these artifacts, some of these artifacts, the IT applications. So applications of computers that will be used in the context of the work units and will participate. Well, sometimes they actually automate part uh, completely or at least part of business processes. Next, um, there is also role for the infrastructure of IT. Okay, it's important. It will play some uh, play some uh, some role, but it's not part that it's mo most interesting in, in, at this moment. Next slide. Okay, when we talk about development of IT applications, now this slide has a, a, a red a, a red circle with the development of IT applications. Okay, uh, someone will take into consideration business process, the work units, the humans, the already existing artifacts. Will take into consideration restrictions from the infrastructure 
and will develop an IT application. Okay, uh, we can call it conventional way, uh, uh, something that GNU is affecting, okay, fine with that, but uh, th this would be the development of IT applications. But um, there are other things that also matter. Next is uh, the, organize, the information systems development. The information systems development, so or, or the, or, uh, developing, improving the development uh, of the organization, that dimension of the enterprise. And of course, this includes the implantation of IT applications. Okay, um, okay, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I might be using some strange language, but that's the way I found in order to avoid the ambiguity that we fall in by using and reusing um, uh, fancy words that everybody is using, but everybody, uh, they are being used by many people, but some very often with different, uh, with different uh, uh, senses. Yeah, so, Professor, let me just interrupt you there because, uh, as you said, it, it might be, it might be the, the, the strange words might be well, uh, strange to, to most people uh, uh, listening to us or, or, or um, assisting this webinar. Uh, so let me just remind you, uh, everyone who's uh, joining us, that you have a Q&A section in the top yeah. right of your window. Um, so please feel free to, to ask, any, ask any questions to the professor and I will, after the presentation, we will answer them. Okay, uh, moving on, you. Professor, sorry. So, so this implantation is uh, uh, another of these um, fancy words. Okay, we are interested on improving the organization um, by, and this will involve implanting IT applications. Okay, so here that's where I would say that GNU will have an impact. I don't, um, okay, uh, it, it will, uh, it's a way of developing uh, IT applications in a different way, but the focus is here. Okay, we are in a condition where to develop, an uh, uh, to develop, to improve the organization, to develop the information system, we need uh, to understand the organization, the enterprise strategy. We need to understand the uh, enterprise's business processes, but as well its work units and its humans and existing artifacts. So we need uh, um, uh, a all encompassing view of the enterprise, including its business level, its organization level, and its resource levels. Next slide. Uh, sometimes during this process of information systems development, the persons involved in this will also get involved on developing the IT application. circle with development of information systems and uh, as well a red circle underneath it with the development of IT applications. The point is, okay, um, I, I could say that the development of information systems includes, might include the development of IT application and this application will later on be implanted in, a, in the organization. The major difference now is that the requirements for the uh, IT application are defined within the context of the information systems development. And these requirements will be expressed as a set, a set of, mo uh, of models, models of the business processes, models of business rules, models of the information. Moving to the next slide. Okay, business development, business, right? Business development, okay. Uh, and this is just to say, yes, uh, look, uh, information systems development, and now there's the image, um, there is as well room for the business development, an exercise of strategy, uh, redefining the vision of the for, the, for, the, for, the, for the enterprise, the, redefining its business model, redefining its, its strategy. Okay, uh, uh, having the possibility of quickly making available applications might be useful, but for the moment, let's stay at and focusing on uh, the, 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 the brown 
full circle with development of um, information of information systems. Next slide. So um, now that is the brown the brown circle of development of information systems, and underneath a blue a blue circle with the uh, development of IT applications, but developing IT applications with um, uh, with Genu or others other uh, other tools that enable um, quick development of applications. Could be no code or low code uh, uh, applications. While well, here we are so we are here to talk about Genu, so we'll focus on the role of, of, of Genu. So. Uh, we have this activity of improving the organization by changing its business processes, by changing its work units, by changing, by um, training humans, sometimes substituting humans, by introducing artifacts. But these artifacts, instead of being um, acquired uh, in the market, uh, there is the possibility of developing them all right, let's use this word, this expression on the spot using an application generator, using uh, Genu, uh, using Genu, uh, uh, a Genu like uh, tool. Next slide. So, um, that's what we. We'll, next slide. So, uh, I would say that this development of information systems that involves the implantation of IT applications is one of the most important functions within the profile of the engineer and manager of information systems. Uh, Joao, please put the slide where there is a list. Yeah, exactly. Title it engineering and management. We're here, we're here, professor. Systems, and there is a list of 11 functions. What is the role of in the engineers and managers of information systems? Once again, a set of strange expressions will appear. OK information curation, so taking care of the, of the enterprise's information. Enlivement of informational objects to IT. This includes um, analytics, includes um, a series of activities where we take inf the information collected by the, collected by the, uh, the enterprise, uh, getting information from the enterprise's environment, and using tools to make, make it accessible to uh, the managers or whoever needs them. The development of IT applications. Yes, uh, uh, we, we believe that the engineer and manager of information systems also needs to know to develop IT applications, even in the classical or conventional way. So then the implantation of IT applications. The upkeeping of the portfolio of IT applications, so managing the set of applications. The design of information systems architectures, of models of the way information is, uh, well, the information itself and how it is collected, how it is stored, how it is processed. Uh, and uh, a series of other, uh, uh, of, uh, other functions that will be affected by the, some of them will be affected by the existence of, uh, of Genu. Next, so development of IT applications, uh, we are talking about the classic developments. It's not very uh, particularly important here. Uh, so um, let's move on. Uh, now, um, by having Genu and having applications generated by Genu, there are certain functions that will have to take this into consideration. Upkeeping of the portfolio of IT applications, the oversight of IT infrastructures, and even the administration of the information systems and technology units will be affected by the uh, the, the existence of a new way of producing uh, of producing um, IT applications. So let's focus on those that are most important. So on a slide that where uh, enlivement of information, informational objects through IT, implantation of IT applications, and setting up of information-centered IT enhanceable enterprise capabilities. These three functions are are highlighted. Okay, then we're here, we're here, Professor. In the following slide, they are um, 
they are uh, only these three. These exactly, are the yes. three functions. These are the three functions within the portfolio of information and uh, of information systems engineers and managers that will be um, will be different by the using of of, of, of Genu. Genu will enable to have um, quickly available IT applications that are uh, developed, um, tailor-made developed, but using high-level, um, um, avoiding going through the traditional to the conventional way. So the focus, the focus is on the, the models that are produced in these activities that, and, and then fed into, into, uh, into Genio. So, um, I'm going to uh, moving forward and um, so please go to a slide that says business and organization development of enterprises with two functions and both functions involve the implantation of IT applications and the, the development of IT applications is something that might be needed uh, from the this perspective, look that this is, they are at a third, a third level of, uh, a, a, a third level of distance. Okay, we want to set up um, some, some organization capabilities, or we want to make best use of information. To achieve this, we have to implant IT applications and uh, implanting IT applications involve um, not just in them, but uh, training people and um, uh, adjusting business processes and uh, 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 managing change in the organization. But the IT applications to be implanted have to be developed. Okay, uh, that's the the development of IT application that becomes very different you know, uh, using using uh, using Genie. So, um, challenging the realm of Genie's impacts, that slide I would like you to, to be seeing at the moment. And my point is the impact of with just Genie is on the business and organization development of enterprises because it changes the way software can be developed. There are uh, there, uh, these, uh, these activities, that, activities that aim at improving the enterprise, change, um, uh, changing the business level, changing the organization level, will, um, will um, uh, benefit from that and uh, will, be, um, it will be possible to carry them in a different in a different way, so Genio uh, can contribute to improve the productivity of business and organization and development of uh, enterprises. Uh, that's uh, my message, and my message is, is in, uh, allow me to repeat it: is challenging the realm where we will be talking about the impact of Genio. Very well, Professor. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, let me just share my screen. We will now proceed to, uh, to a somewhat of an informal Q&A. Um, let me just uh, share my screen. We were here. OK. OK, Professor. Um, let me start by asking you um, the, basically the same question I asked. Um, I, I asked João Paulo Carvalho. Uh, so, uh, as I said, I don't know if you if you could hear us um, back then, but the, the, I said that the vast majority of engineering fields have evolved in the last decades to increase productivity, um, but software engineering uh, didn't make this leap yet. Um, so do you see platforms like Genu as the possible answer for software engineering uh, to finally take this very much needed step? And since since you are unbiased on this on this uh, on this matters. Um, well, um, we could um, ask several things we could say. I could start by saying that, okay, look, uh, by doing this, software engineering disappears. So software engineers won't have interest on, on having the, uh, on having a, a tool like this. Uh, 
I don't look um, software engineering is very different in nature from other uh, engineering areas where you deal with uh, with physical phenomena with chemical phenomena with bio biological phenomena we are dealing with um, with ideas with, with, with language uh, it's it's very different we use the word engineering same word but it's completely it's completely different so we are talking about uh, producing um, uh, software uh, software devices so computer devices that run uh, software they can that make that make these um, uh, computers to do special things so yes I would say um, there is a uh, there is a different way of producing this and the genie is the demonstration that this is that this is this is this this is possible of course uh, we have to uh, to recognize that Genio uh, is uh, like any other software generator. Uh, uh, it is um, is able of producing a certain kind of software. So, um, if we are talking about developing software for controlling uh, washing machines or for uh, satellites or whatever it is, uh, we are talking about a different type of of, of software. And uh, I'm not sure whether uh, Genio is, would be the, 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 the right solution. Uh, Genio is oriented towards uh, software for uh, enterprises exactly. and as a set of assumptions. Okay, it's, it, will, it, 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 it is different, uh, different from, uh, doesn't involve the conventional, pro conventional programming, but uh, it is um, uh, a set of restrictions, a set of limitations in the scope of application. Professor, um, the, some, um, one, one attendee uh, asked, uh, how do you see modeling over 10 years and what is the role of artificial intelligence? Uh, what role will the artificial intelligence take in, in, in that future? Um, sorry. Uh, do you want me to repeat that? You, you, you already said you, these are two separate questions, right? Yes, exactly. So yeah, it's a two for one. How do you see modeling over 10 years and what is the role of artificial intelligence in them? Okay. Okay. Um, mo modeling. Okay. Uh, look, um, the, um, modeling, the question is modeling of what? Uh, are we talking about models of applications or are we talking about models of the domains um, the uh, modeling of the domain or the aspects of the domain where this idea for where, where this software will will be will be used uh, if we talk about um, making introducing changes in organizations we need models of the organization and uh, these models have been evolving and becoming more sophisticated because we uh, we need uh, because of the evolution of uh, information technology and this spreading its use it, it, its use in the organization is spreading so we need to um, include in our models aspects that weren't taken into into consideration earlier on uh, we need more detail so uh, the modeling of um, of uh, business aspects, modeling of organization aspects, modeling of the resources, humans and machines in the, in the functioning of the, of the organization. I think that's something that will, um, will naturally evolve, but we need to capture more detail to be more, um, more precise on, what, on what we describe. And this will happen, uh, well, because we, uh, we need to capture more of the domain but also because we will be able of feeding directly this this um, these models to um, platforms and tools like genu and uh, these models have to be precise enough in order to uh, enable genu to, um, uh, to 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 work uh, and uh, uh, so uh, in terms of um, uh, the role of modeling i would say that is crucial the function I, I, I described it, the, the, the designing IS information systems architectures 
is all about creating models of the enterprise, looking into an enterprise as an information system, as an entity that processes information. Processes information at the operational level, processes information because uh, uh, cooperation has to exist, because coordination, because control, because of um, uh, uh, intel intelligence in, in the sense of getting information from the outside, uh, because of the, of, of the decision making. So, um, so um, most of the working of the uh, most of the, the adapt, uh, adaptati, uh, um, adaptive capabilities of an organization are based on information. So we have to capture these information processing mechanisms. And that we have been becoming more sophisticated on, 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 on doing that. Uh, the second question was about uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, See, how, uh, basically, how, what's how, the role of artificial intelligence in this in this future? Uh, okay, the role of artificial intelligence. Well, um, we have been viewing what can be achieved with uh, artificial intelligence in every aspect of our lives. And uh, this includes what happens in uh, in uh, uh, in, uh, in in the enterprise, and these machines that we are putting together with humans um, will um, will make the will will, will um, enhance the information processing capabilities of the enterprises. We are still uh, in the dawn of this process of uh, using widely using uh, widely using uh, artificial intelligence in everything so uh, we are used to um, to think on well there is a component that needs to be intelligence intelligent and using artificial intelligence we have to start thinking that every component will have its own uh, uh, its own form of, of intelligence, of artificial intelligence. And uh, this will impact on the way how we look into organizations, uh, the way uh, of uh, we, uh, we improve uh, the organizations. Some of the, uh, some of the activities of the uh, enterprise improvers, improvement, uh, improvers, so the, the enterprise developers, will also be uh, using this, this uh, artificial intelligence. Um, okay, the, but uh, asking um, to asking um, um, and to answer your question is, is not that difficult. And if you allow me, I can link this to, um, to the answer Juan Paulo Carvalho was giving me and, uh, and the Armin that we can learn from the other engineers. Uh, yes, I agree with that, but let me insist. On traditional engineers, in traditional engineering, we are building on a better understanding of physics, of chemistry, and uh, on biology or whatever to, uh, to, uh, to evolve, to create new, um, new, new artifacts, new solutions. Um, here, in terms of when we talk about, well, if you talk about computers and computer engineering, it's very much related to physics. But if we move uh, uh, into the, 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 the software, that's, let me repeat, that's the, the realm for uh, language, for ideas, for, um, for cognition. And um, we are still learning how, how, to, how, how to deal with this. And we are, using, um, we, we are using technology that is evolving very, very fast. The infrastructure where software runs is changing very fast. So this brings the difficulty on, OK, we have to make a way of producing software just to realize that, OK, we have to adapt it uh, for the scope of uh, Gideon. I uh, was listening to João Paulo in the beginning, where he's explaining that it is uh, agnostic. So it can deal with, with, with different technologies. But I imagine that this poses some, um, some challenges to the developers of Genu on keeping up with the pace of the evolution of, of, of technology. 
uh, new new processors that demand new uh, operating systems that uh, will uh, demand new uh, uh, running platforms and, and, and so on. So we, we need to keep up with, 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 with this and these are additional difficulties for the, for the engineers. And artificial intelligence is one of the uh, one of the one of the aspects that bring novelty in what uh, both in the, in the side of the problem and in the side of the solution. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, I just realized that we are five minutes past the time, uh, so I'll just ask you one more question, and then we will um, close this webinar. Um, and my question would be. Uh, how, um, what is the University of Minho, particularly the School of Engineering, uh, doing to meet this new reality where models are taking, uh, are, are gaining traction uh, in the software development field? Okay, thank you for that question. Look, as I, as I, as I showed, uh, we have different degree programs uh, with, covering different, different aspects, and this is dealt with in a different way in, in different programs. In the um, information systems engineering and engineering and management of information systems, um, we, are, we are particularly interested in, in the uh, no-code technologies, low-code uh, technologies on GNU. Actually, we, uh, we started last year a, a, a partnership with, uh, with Quidgest, one of the Quidgest uh, uh, collaborators and partners is teaching a course uh, where Genu is the uh, where Genu is the um, is the subject of, of, of that of that uh, of that course. So our students learn how to uh, uh, how to um, how to use how to produce software using uh, using Genu. The second edition of that course is um, is running now uh, is in this semester. Uh, is, I think is a little bit earlier to. Uh, yeah, a little bit earlier to uh, to, uh, to uh, understand the, the impact of this uh, experiment we are we are carrying out, but we have no doubt that we have to prepare our our, our students. Uh, well, our students in engineering and management of information systems to uh, so they can focus on the business on the organization. Uh, they can be they, they need to be freed from the details regarding the the. the the, the, uh, the related to obtaining the uh, obtaining the, the the IT application itself. So this kind of, of platforms is the natural evolution uh, in their preparation uh, as uh, as um, um, I, as developers of IT application. Okay. We uh, we understand that our perception, our vision is that they need to. Um, to keep their competencies on getting involved in the more conventional way of developing software, but they would, they would also need to be ready to embrace this new reality uh, of developing software. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, we are eight minutes past the time we were supposed to close this. Um, to everyone still attending uh, this webinar, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, to, those of, to, to all of you that we couldn't answer your questions, um, feel free to uh, email us to email your questions to academy at Um You can also uh, learn more about Genio uh, on this link, uh, bit.ly slash type of Genio. Um, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Professor, thank you very much for attending this. Thank you as well for the opportunity to, uh, to make this presentation and to especially on, on, on uh, uh, participating in this, uh, in this discussion. Thank you very much, everyone.